He's the grandson of perhaps one of the most famous explorers of pioneer times. He was known as a bit of a hothead and definitely a curmudgeon. And he's also responsible for bringing over some of the mainstream rules and racing and wagering systems that we enjoy today. The race in his honor is one of the oldest in America, and it is also the subject of this week's Thoroughfan Name Behind the Race. Born in the Kentucky bluegrass of Louisville in January of 1846, Meriwether Lewis Clark Jr. was the son of an architect, Meriwether Lewis Clark Sr., and Abigail Prather Churchill. The Churchills were considered one of the first families of Kentucky, having settled in Louisville in 1787 and owning 300 acres of land there. If his name brings up a slight feeling of deja vu, it is because both he and his father were named by his grandfather after his Louisiana Purchase exploration partner, Meriwether Lewis. Originally living in St. Louis, where his father worked as an architect, things changed for young six-year-old Ludy, as he was often called, when his mother died shortly after birthing the seventh child of the family. Shortly thereafter, he moved back to Louisville to be raised and live with his aunt and two uncles on the Churchill estate. It was here that Clark got bit by the racing bug after being introduced to it by his uncles, Henry and John Churchill. In the early 1870s, he traveled with his uncles to Europe, attending such famous events as the Epsom Derby and hobnobbing with the elite of the English and French racing world. Returning to the States from these prestigious events in 1873, he was then determined to build a racetrack in Louisville and bring the prestige of high-end racing to the Bluegrass State. One of the premier races to be run at the new track was one that a few folks might know today, the Kentucky Derby. He had the will, but not exactly the means or money to carry out his dream. Fortunately, his uncles did, and they assisted a great deal in the realization of the dream by both providing Clark with some of their 300-acre property to build the track and helping organize some other wealthy racing fans into the first Louisville Jockey Club, of which Clark was named president. Two years after his return to the States, the track and initial grandstand were built and the track opened to much fanfare on May 17, 1875, with Clark named as Churchill Downs' first president. The Kentucky Derby was indeed run on this opening day, but at that point was actually considered more of an undercard type race taking a backseat to the Louisville Cup and the Gentleman's Cup race. It was not just the creation and building of Churchill Downs that Ludy is known for. Ever place a bet at a track in the U.S.? Well, the current system of betting employed at tracks in the U.S. today have Clark to thank for it. He was fascinated by the paramutual wagering system he saw used in France on his trips over there, and with his uncle's blessing and financial backing, brought the first paramutual wagering system to the U.S. to be used at Churchill Downs. This was much to the chagrin, we are sure, of the bookies of the day who demanded he remove the machines. They were eventually removed, but were restored in 1908 at the track after bookmaking was outlawed. Clark was also known for instituting some of the racing rules and regulations that are still in place today, including a uniform system of jockey weights. He presided over the First American Turf Congress and created a stake system known as the Great American Stallion Stakes, which was a concept and model for what today's Breeders' Cup races are all based on. Clark made Churchill Downs and racing his only focus and passion, and his dedication showed in the product he was able to put out there for the public. With that great mind and vision also came a less than desired personality. He was very quick to insult people, lose his temper, and belittle anyone who he thought was below him, which in his mind was, well, just about everyone. Often brandishing a gun at people to scare them and make them see things his way, he took it a little too far with a breeder one day whom he ordered off the grounds for not paying fees. After knocking the man to the ground and demanding he leave, the story is the breeder returned with a weapon of his own and allegedly shot Clark through a door hitting him in the chest. Not gravely wounded, 
Clark later rescinded the ban and did not press charges against the breeder even after he turned himself in. His constant curmudgeonly ways began to weigh on everyone, causing negative press for the track and alienating his uncle so much that eventually they fired him from almost all duties at the track and basically gave any control of Churchill Downs and the land in their will to other family members. His lone remaining position at the track was that of a racing steward. Known to gamble a lot on stocks, he suffered incredible losses in the market crash of 1893 and went on to make a living working as a steward at many other tracks on the racing circuit. Divorced and facing the possibility of dying alone as a very poor man, sadly Clark took his own life on April 22nd, 1899. The Clark Stakes, or the Clark Handicap as it was known until 2018, was created the first year Churchill Downs opened and is one of America's oldest stakes races. Run at various distances over the past 100 plus years, it currently is a great one race run at nine furlongs in November. Because of the timing of the race in the fall, occurring after many of the fall championship races and later Breeders' Cup races, did not always attract the top level handicap of three year old horses as they were done racing for the season. That began to change in the late 1990s as Silver Charm won the race in 1998. In 2011, the most interesting horse in the world and perennial fan favorite Wise Dan scored his biggest dirt win of career. In the Clark. Winning the Gun Clark by three the lengths Clark on the wire. And Breaking most lucky recently, was second, the old the warrior Tom to the second, Top took the prize the last year. Has conquered the, Clark. Wrapped up in the, end to win it by tight for second. the Clark has now become cemented as a major target of late blooming three year olds and older horses alike in an attempt to make final cases for year end honors. And it all started with the dream of a young man who wanted to bring the best of the best, to the bluegrass of Kentucky. Mm -hmm.